Good morning, good evening, and good afternoon. Welcome back to the Easy Talk. I wasn't here last week. I was out with the missus and I enjoyed it. I didn't want to actually to do this one because uh, I want to go out, but I can't. I haven't got any money. No money. But anyway, we are here. Now, there are not many things that kind of rile me up. Actually, there's a lot of things that kind of get my back up. And one of which is this fascination with um, the numbers, the numbers, the stats, the statisticians and the numbers and this and that and the other. But, you know, we're going to get and talk about all that and other bits and pieces on this Easy Talk. Yes, welcome back indeed uh, on this Easy Talk Friday evening. Of course, it's going to vary wherever you are in this lovely world of ours. Actually, lovely sometimes. Uh, we've got um, the enforcement, aka the enforcer, <laughs> aka Des. Des, good evening. How are you, man? <laughs> yeah, I'm good, mate. I'm good. Thank you for having me on with this with this great panel. We, uh, we've got someone down the bottom who knows what he's talking about. You've got Alex who knows what he's talking about, and then you've got me. I have no idea. I'm not going to say I know what I'm talking about, but you know. <laughs> no, it's good to be here. Look at the sophistication down there. Look, eh? <laughs> I'll stick. I'll stick with me cup of tea. <laughs> and I'll stick with me with me Bailey's. Get anyway. it all day. Get it all day. <laughs> Tony, uh, how, how have you been? How's the week been? You haven't been on for a few weeks, but how you been? Yeah, no, I'm good, Alex. I'm good. I mean, we've been riding high, haven't we, as a supporting group? And um, yeah, even despite the uh, the little mishap in the midweek, I'm still riding high. I'm still quite buoyant in in spirit. I'm hopeful that something could uh, potentially happen by the end of the season. So yeah, you know, enjoying the best of. All right, nice one, nice one. So um, let's get all systems uh, go. Um. How can I say this? The numbers, statistics. Uh, here's a bit a quick quiz for you, you gentlemen. What does XG mean? Has anyone got any ideas? In XG? What, what, what does that mean? Anyone? It means it not... expe expected goals. That's exactly well what done. I was going to say. I was well done. That. Well done. What about XA? Expected assist. Somebody's done their homework. Homework. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what about XGOT? You make your knees up now. I'm not. Uh, goals. Mm. Something. Time. I don't know. Tony. Now you got me there, Kept fella. Expected goals on target. Ah, oh, right. Uh, so, I mean, you can't good? have a goal that isn't off target. Exactly. So that looks like SOT, as in shots on shots target. Shots on target. Yeah. Well, yeah, it, it exists. And the last one, my favourite one. Any ideas? I D G A D. Uh, mm. No, not a clue, mate. To be honest. No? I don't give a damn. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one. The one that is homework. <laughs> <laughs> Tony, <laughs> Tony. <laughs> well done, fella. Uh, Personally, I don't give a damn. XG, XA, whatever you want to call it. But what is it, the fascination with, with, with stats and phrases and everything else under the sun, Tony? What is it? Do we need it? Well, we kind of do because we now live in a... Oops. We live in an age which is um, all about statistics and data. You know, look, we even have to consider data every day. We are using data all the time. You know, it's, it, if you ask your kids, how much data have you got left on your phone? They will know how much megabytes, gigabytes, terabytes they have. And therefore, data is be all and end all. It literally is the... 
how can I com compare it to something of yesteryear? Uh, <laughs> Go for it's it. It's like the teletext of today. So back in the day, when we didn't have phones, we relied on teletext. Where was, what were the results in Europe? What was the news? How could we get on holiday? Who was offering the best flight fares? Teletext. Yeah? yeah. Now yeah. it's all about online data. So as a result, literally everything is data-led. And that applies to literally every shot, every defensive tackle, every save, every bit of positioning, how many miles were run, how many kilometers were run, who had their inside leg measurement taken, <laughs> just like literally everything. <laughs> All right, moving swift on this. <laughs> well, it, Tony's totally right, but I, I'm like you, Alex, I, I couldn't give a damn. And don't get me wrong, there's, there's lads out there that, I mean, Richard is one of them. He absolutely loves the stats. What I think it is, is football is a performance sport. And it's just a way of keeping track of the performances so you can criticise or praise as much as a fan or as a pundit as much as you see fit. Yeah? it's some And it's conversation starter. It's, um, it's a way of getting yeah. conversation started, yeah. I think. You know? But it, it is a performance sport. And don't get me wrong, back in the day, I mean, we're... I don't mean to be rude, gentlemen, but we're old school supporters, aren't we, right? So, to me, statistics were, I hope Saka gets 20 goals a season. I hope Martinelli gets 20 goals a season. I hope someone gets 25 goals a season. That's all the stats we wanted. But now, it, like, 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 it, like Tony said, football has become a spreadsheet, you know? And it's a spreadsheet that you can recall on. So, it also... Do you know what I think some of it was brought up by commentators? <coughs> the commentating ain't so boring anymore. Do you know what I mean? So, that, I don't know, I'll give you an example. Saka scored four goals in his last two games, yeah? And it was with an XG of blah, 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 yeah? So, it's... it's. I agree with I agree with Tony. We need it to sort of, like, enhance things in, in a positive way. But I don't know if we need it personally, day in, day out. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, but no, from from a layman's uh, 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 perspective, again, all I cared about. I'll give you some stats. So, when was the last time that we won the Premier League? Two thousand three, stroke two thousand four season. Yeah, all right, like twenty years ago. And, and you know, I mean, where are we now? We're not top of the league. How many goals has Jesus scored? Those are the stats I'm more concerned about. Yeah, I'm, exactly. I'm not worried about this XG, XA, all this. This crap. I couldn't really, I couldn't really give a damn. But I'm just thinking, is it, is it a way of distracting us, Tony, from the real situation that we have not won the Premier League in like 20 years now? Is it distracting you us? Know, from... You know what, Alex? I don't think it is distracting us no? from those things. But I think it's giving us lots of conversation notes to add to the discussions that we used to have of yesteryear. So yeah. again, I've, I've got an, a perfect example for you. Back in the day when we didn't have all this kind of information, we used to look at players and we used to overanalyze their effectiveness in games. And I'll give you a classic. Alex Song, to me, is one of the best midfielders we ever had. And I used to sing his praises all the time, how he used to get assists on a regular basis to Robin Van Persie. And he never got any of the plaudits. Imagine Alex Song today he would probably be in the top five for assists in the league. And we'd all be going, oh, but look how many assists he gets from midfield. Look how many breakups he gets. Look how many interceptions he gets. Look how much, you know, all these metrics that before we used to talk about a good player and mm. how effective they were in a game without having those statistics. Because our eyes could show us what, exactly. what we were seeing. Exactly. You know, if yeah. I go back another 10, 15 years, I remember Paul Davis. He wasn't like um, a flashy player at all, mm. but he was so effective at what George Graham wanted him to do. And mm. in the middle of the park, 
we didn't have the you know we didn't have the CDM and this the sent the, the the attacking midfielder. You were just a midfielder. Midfielder, yeah, yeah. And your That's job it. was get up, come back, get up, come yeah. back. Do your job. Do your Hold job. Hold the middle of the park. Line up in front of the defenders. Take the ball off defenders. Create opportunities. Make runs. Score goals. And that was your job. We didn't have all these fancy positions inside left, inverted right. You know, we didn't have all that. Defenders, midfielders, strikers. End of. And that was but, what we talked about down the pub after the game. But Tony, that's all we need now, Tony. That's all we need now. Yeah, it is. I agree. Tony's right, though. Tony is right. End of the day, it is all we need now, Alex. But end of the day as well, right? It, it's just, it's hyping up football. It's getting kids, in. it's getting younger people interested who are into numbers. You know, it's that, it's how do we expand the knowledge? Do you know what I mean? Even though it's giving quirky things like XG and, I mean, uh, you, know, just, <laughs> you know, do you know what I mean, though? It's, it, I don't know. It's I'm like you guys. A midfielder was a midfielder. A, yeah. A striker was a striker. But you see, I agree again. Tony Tony's mentioned a couple of players there that were great, right? Didn't get their flowers, right? But we do that a lot today. There's a lot of players who don't get their flowers, but just do their job. For mm. example, I'll give you a quick example. Kibior in the last forget the Porto game because we're going to talk about yeah. that in a minute, right? Yeah. Kibior in the last two games has played brilliantly because Arteta has let him defend. He hasn't he hasn't let him go and do this inverted rubbish. He's let Ben White go and do the inverted. Kibior's doing what he knows what to do. So it makes him look a better player. On against um oh, I've lost me I've lost my track. Who did Burnley. we last play? Sorry, I've Burnley. Burnley or Burnley. thank you, thank you. Mm. Against Burnley, could have been man of the match because he played that well, and he Got was doing. Yeah. He was doing on. He was doing what he was meant to be doing on the pitch. <coughs> we didn't care about XG and blah blah blah. We cared. Give your you're defending, mate, and you're getting back when you need to, and you're getting forward when you need to, and that's all I care about. Exactly. Yeah. 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 I don't know. Maybe I'm just 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 um, getting too old, man. I don't want to hear about this XG. XG. No, no, mate. No, don't overcomplicate it. It doesn't need it. Anyway, anyway, let's move on to the second uh, topic. And the second topic is um, FC Porto against Arsenal. And um, I know you lovely jubbies love the stats. Here's some stats for you. <laughs> Thirty-six fouls. Thirty-six fouls. Arsenal, not one shot on target, Tony. Loving yeah. the facts, Tony. <laughs> That's when you don't want to see the tactics. Yeah, yeah. 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 Burn, a... burn, whatever that was, burn it. <laughs> <laughs> did, did we underestimate FC Porto? Or were they so good at nullifying our tax, Martinelli? Bukayo Saka, Erdegaard. And I saw a video um, yesterday about how Arsenal struggle with the low block. We know that. But a mid block, where the midfield, they just neutralise Arsenal. What, what FC Porto, that, that good, Tony? Or, I don't know. Um, I've got to give them credit. I mean, they're, they're a team who have got pedigree. And teams with pedigree generally just know how to make teams, how to make life difficult for teams and if you're a young team like Arsenal and you haven't got that kind of pedigree with any of your players then essentially you're looking at experiencing things that you know you don't normally have you know the knowledge on how to to deal with um it was just a it was just a weird game unfortunately you know we've we fell asleep for one one or two moments in the game obviously they could have scored very early on that was one moment, and then they did score late on. Um, so that was the other moment. But other than that, there weren't really a huge amount of chances either way. So they've only had two shots on target. We've had zero. We've had a lot of shots. We had 22 to their 14. So, um, <laughs> well, that was fouls, sorry. But yeah, we've had yeah, um, yeah. A, seven to their six, sorry. Yeah. Um, 
So it wasn't really a great deal, I, I should say. But, you know, overall, you know, when you have that much possession and you're up against a well-organized team, you kind of go, you know what, this could be one of them where, you know, a quick breakaway could lead to a goal. I thought they were managing it extremely well through the game. It was just that momentary lapse right at the end. And do you know what? Um, with the um, Declan Rice early, early doors, yellow cards, Tony, um, I, somebody told me that that kind of fashion, his behaviour for the rest yeah. of the game, he wasn't able to really be himself. Do, do you agree? Agree? That totally changed Declan Rice's play. Definitely. He had to go softly, softly. You know, do you know what I mean? He still mm. played well, don't get me wrong, but he had to go softly, softly. Mm. Um, what we couldn't, the, the point is, guys, we couldn't get behind them. We could not get behind them unless it was a corner. And on Martinelli's side, that defender who was marking Martinelli, he, he, he had a game and a half. Yeah. And I've yeah. got to say, yeah, they did have an early chance, didn't they, in the first half? Yeah. And yes, I think, I, I do think Declan Rice's yellow card changed the momentum a bit. Mm. But to me, until they scored that goal, they didn't look like they were going to score in the second half. Mm. Mm. And it, like, it did just come out of the break. And you can't take nothing away from the goal because it was a great goal. Mm. But I also, I've heard people slagging off Raya, oh, he could have moved yeah. better, he could have got his feet yeah. in a better position. Absolute rubbish. As an ex-goalkeeper, he could have had a month to get there and he still wouldn't have made it because it was just going in no matter what. You, they're, they're, it wasn't... You would say, like, so if Real Madrid scored it or Barcelona scored it, it'd be a wonder goal, yeah? Because mm. Porto scored it, even though Tony's right, they've got credibility because they've won the Champions League twice, they've got credibility, it's a freak goal. No, it's not. It was a great goal. He just hit it and he hit it well. There's no, yeah. there's nothing else you can take away yeah. from it. Yeah. Now, there were also people uh, having a go at Martinelli saying, and I've said it myself, but I didn't mean it in a bad way, hoof it down the field. But let's be honest, right? It's easy to say hoof it down the field. You're not on the pitch. You but, know what I mean? There's, wouldn't, wouldn't have Arteta have been... Because, you know, you see him ranting a raving. I'd say ranting a raving. Yeah. That's not the right yeah, phrase. Yeah. But you see him barking at instructions. Surely he should have told, or maybe there wasn't enough time to say, calm it down, just hold on to the ball. Yeah. Don't, don't, no, don't do you know. you know. Alex, do you know what? You're right. Yeah, you're right. But it didn't happen. Yeah. So acceptance is a great thing, you know. But I still think, I'm going to say, I still think Arsenal have got a chance because when we come back to the Emirates, it's going to be a different atmosphere. Um, I mean, Pepe didn't even Pepe, the defender, didn't even get a yellow card. He's going to be forty-one <laughs> next week. The only, the, only foul, the only foul he committed is when he stamped on his own goal, goal um, <laughs> goalkeeper's heel. Do you know what I mean? So, and that, even the commentator, even the commentators were saying, "I can't believe Pepe hasn't got a yellow card yet." <laughs> uh, you know, but. We've still got a chance and we've got to be realistic. They beat us on the night, fair and square. Give them their flowers, fair play. Uh, yeah. it, was a, it was a good game to watch. It was a bit annoying as an Arsenal supporter, but it was actually a good game to watch. And how can we have 10 corners and not score? Not how is for that the want of trying, though, was it? No, no. <laughs> yeah. Here, I don't know if you guys noticed, and they said it quite a bit in commentary. Havertz was on the edge of the... He must have some speed because he was on the end, edge of the 18-yard box and was getting to that back post in the time it took Saka to cross the ball in. Yeah, yeah. All right, there was no end product, but, you know, to be able to be able to read the pass like that, read the ball like that and have a go, it's still quite impressive. I'm not sure. Maybe I'm being too hard. I think maybe Trossard's chance was maybe the best chance from the corner. Yeah. I don't think he had the best game, though. I don't think Trossard no, had the best no. game. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Not take. I love Trossard. Don't get me wrong. Trossard, great player. He, he's for me. He's one of, the, if not the best, he's one of the best finishers in the league. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I do wonder if we are missing someone in midfield. I mean, this will get Tony going because he loves him. We might be missing Partey. You know, Tony thinks he's a, Tony thinks he's a stallion. I think he's more of a shy. Uh, sh <laughs> <laughs> I think it's more of a Shetland pony, but there we go. Let's check the stats, shall we? 
Let's <laughs> <laughs> check the XG and the stats here. We can't agree on everything, but <laughs> it is what it is. Luckily, it's a second leg, so we've got a chance, and we've just got to get. We've got to take those chances when we get them. Yeah, um, Tony. Just going on a bit of a sideline about the goalkeeper situation. Do, do you think it's a bit harsh that Ramsdale got us to the Champions League, but yet he's not getting a sniff in the position there? Um, a lot of players could say that. I mean, oh, yeah. you know, there's players yeah. who were at the club last year who aren't there now, and they could say, you know, well, I helped you get there. We had a great run last year. We finished the league in second place. I was part and fundamental of part of that team. <laughs> Just, just the way it is. That's just football. That's life. You just get on with it, you know. Um, you know, you what, what, what today's price is is not yet. Yesterday's price is not today's price, as they say. Um, you know, you've just got to get on and know. Um, you could do a great job at work today. Tomorrow, somebody else is going to be coming after your job. Yeah. And yeah. if they if they come in and impress the bosses, up your game or go find somewhere else to do your job. Yeah. Well said. Yeah. In the week as well, guys, can I just make one quick point about players? And, um, there, are, There's like three players. I saw a YouTube video the other day. I can't believe it. I can't remember who made it. But um, saying that Emil Smith-Rowe is dead wood. And just because he's not really? playing, just because he's not playing, he doesn't mean he's dead wood. Mm. He's, he's got to take his opportunities when he gets them. That's, that's the that's thing. Yeah. You know? Let's go into the live chat. Uh, a bit of a breather from the stats and everything else. Um, John Laguna says, uh, has Glenwin forgot to put his 50 pounds in? I'm not sure why that is. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> leave him alone. Uh, let's go, Alex. Uh, bring it, Des. How is it, Tony? Uh, hit that like button. Thank you, Colin, for that. Thanks, Colin. Uh, Cheers, Colin. He said absolutely nothing. I'm not sure why he's saying that. Yeah, yeah. Well, Tony got there in the end. I was quite surprised, actually. Yeah, I don't give a damn. Yeah. Um, uh, XG, uh, expected geek geeks that didn't play sports. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> uh, C-Facts, Tony. C-Facts, says uh, John Duna. Oh, expected excuses, then. <laughs> oh. I'm yeah, saying, maybe. I'm saying nothing. And EW expected waffles. Uh, right, well, EW? Yeah. There was no ex EW. Where I know. He's just making it up, isn't he? Yeah, he's <laughs> making it up. <laughs> oh. yeah, he could be right, though. He could be right. Tony, the game is played on grass, not graph paper. That's true. Yeah, you say that, but you know what? I don't know if you've ever watched, but if you look on the sidelines, yeah, back in the old day. We just had the coach and his second and uh, maybe another other coach. And they sit along with, in the bench and they just look at the play and they make decisions. Now we've got guys up in the stand. We've got a little iPad. So yeah, you know the when carrier, the guy comes yeah. on, he's like, look at the iPad and look at it. Yeah. You know, it's like, what? What, are you, what is all this? Yeah. You yeah. know, I would imagine if you go Sunday league football, you know, you get, you, <laughs> you get, you get your instructions in about three seconds. Go on there, lad. Go score a goal. Yeah. Yeah. No one's going to pull out an iPad and go, you want to be doing that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. And John said, stats mean nothing if you can't put the ball in the net. He's right. We'll move on yeah. from that. We'll I mean, it's easy, it's easy to say that, and it's a very simplistic view. And, and in all honesty... Football is a very simplistic game and we, you know, we as fans like it because it, it, it's one of those sports that we don't have to deal with millions of facts. But unfortunately, we are now in the, the as I said, the information age. And that's why you've got things like VAR and goal light technology and all these things that are coming to try to elevate the quality of the game. But ultimately, do we actually require and need all these things? I'll tell you, you know, what we do need. I'll tell you what, we need the refs to be upgraded. Wow. Well, that's that's we a, do need, that's a, we yeah, do that's need a, the rest to be either trained properly or, or given, you know, make the rules so everybody understands them. Yeah, yeah. You know? I've had a discussion many times on the channel about whether we should have um, foreign refs from, from other European leagues if that will make the, the system any better. 
So, what did you in that in that case? Then I'll ask you both the question. The ref from the Porto game. What did you make of his performance? Did, was it what you expected, or was it better than you expected, or worse? Or what, what I didn't like, and I think maybe it's kind of played in FC Porto's um, uh, um, gameplay. That I mean, the amount of fouls. It just kind of broke up play, didn't it? Whereas Arsenal, they need the, the fluidity, the free-flowing uh, football. So it kind of played in Etienne Porto's um, uh, game plan. But I thought the referee blew up too many times for, for for silly fouls, which really weren't fouls. So I wasn't really impressed what about with the shirt? What, what about the shirt, Paul, or Martinelli? That was well, crazy. There were, there were, there were so many there. So many <laughs> points there. But, that was yeah, so I wasn't crazy. Really yeah. What about you, Tony? Would you go for um, having a referees from other leagues? I mean, there does no. seem to be a difference in quality, the refs overseas. But I'm not sure if that's the answer. I'm yeah. really not. Yeah. I, I, I kind of feel like there's going to be a language problem. Um, I know it doesn't exist in the Champions League, but you literally have one group of refs from each country and they're the highest quality. Now, on a Saturday afternoon when you've got eight Premier League games, where are you getting all these refs from? Are That's you getting them from all the different countries? And what are their countries expecting? Because you kind of got to go, well, if we take your Itali Italian, Italian's best ref, well, who's managing, who's refing Milan versus Inter on the same afternoon? Mm, mm. Good you know, point. The thing, the thing that gets me about these days, um, from a lot of fans as well, right, is when we see a foul, I'll speak as general. I'm not just pointing people out. But when we see a foul, and say the referee doesn't give it, as an example, uh, but someone will do their fan cam or whatever, whatever the case may be, and they'll say, and they'll say, oh, but I've seen them given, but obviously they weren't given against us. It wasn't given to us. Yeah, you know I mean? don't say you've seen them given because end of the day, it's the ref's discretion, and and you can't you can't argue with it because it isn't going to change it. And even if you try and change it, it's too late because he's already made the decision. Yeah, yeah. You know, you, you know if it's a foul or if it, or if it isn't a foul. Yeah. Um, so, something that's kind of um, got people talking, um, actually, beginning of last week, was about um, Bakayo Saka and whether he is world-class world class, yeah. or not. Personally, I don't think he's world-class. He's, he's a good player. Not a great player. Great players are world class players. Kaya <coughs> Saka, a great player, Tony? So it really comes down to certain, <coughs> again, points of view. Yeah. Because I remember seeing Gary Lineker and thinking he really has very little to his game. He's not the biggest guy in the world. He's not going to, um, you know, he's not like uh, Olivier Giroud who can hold up the ball and bring people into play. I don't ever remember seeing him ever score an overhead kick. Um, he was all right with his head. But do you know what he could do? He could put the ball in the back of the net. He, he didn't have a, th a thunderbuster shot like Alan Shearer did, but he just knew how to put the ball in the back of the net. And uh, if you had to ask me who I would prefer to have as my striker, 100 times out of 100... I would have chosen Ian Wright over over um, Lin Lineker. No, sorry. Gary Lineker. Gary Lineker. Yeah, yeah. But the thing was, <sighs> every time Lineker put on the England shirt, he scored. And I couldn't, I couldn't argue with any England manager who played Gary Lineker because mm. he was a phenomenal scorer for England and Leicester. And. Much though I always wish that he could go, go on, play righty, play righty. I couldn't complain. Mm -hmm. And this is the thing. No one in their right mind would ever say Gary Lineker was a world-class player. But he played at the best teams in the world, including Barcelona, at internationals, in World Cups. And he scored everywhere he went. But as a, as a player, I couldn't see anything great about him other than just knowing where to be and how to put the ball in the back of the net. Now, does that make you world class? I mean, let's be honest, Tony. Let's be honest, Tony right? A world class, a world class player for me, right? But if you take Saka, right? Saka's not world class yet. I'm not saying he won't be, but he's not there yet, right? 
I mean, he can't head a ball at the moment. He needs someone needs to teach Saka how to head a ball. Yeah. But anyway, the point I was going to make is world class player, Zinazine Zidak. Played for, like you said, played for all the best teams, won the World Cup multiple times. Yeah. That makes you a world class player. Right. Okay. So that also means that someone, even though Erlen Haaland can score 50 goals a season, he's not world class because he hasn't done it. I think to be world class, you have to win the World Cup. Go on, Tony, go on. No, no, I, I, I'm listening. I, I think it's right. a great argument, but I think it's also an argument that a lot of people will go, oh, I'm not sure, Des. I think that, that, that you might still consider him world class if you could bag 30 plus goals a season nah, no, in two no. different parts of the world. No. What's the main point of football? I'll give you, I'll give you, I'll give you, I'll give you, uh, there must be a, a plethora of players who have won bugger all and you would say they still were world class. For example, but Harry Sorry. Kane. I'll leave it out. He's cursed. <laughs> leave it out, mate. <laughs> you want, excuse me one second. I love you like a, I love, I love you like a brother. I love you like a brother. Tony, what have right, you done, man? <laughs> are you on the right show, boss? Honestly. Do you, want to, do you want to give us another example? Because that... Nah, so I'm enforcing that, mate. Sorry. All right. Let me give you another one. <laughs> Robbie <laughs> Fowler. <laughs> Let me give you another. Robbie Fowler. Oh, dear. Uh, how's he well quiet? <coughs> I'm asking. He's Welsh. He's done nothing. <laughs> You're talking about Ryan Giggs. Robbie Fowler's English. Robbie Fowler's English. Nah, he's, he might as well have been Welsh. He's rubbish. <laughs> See, there's the point. It don't matter. It don't matter, mate. Okay, let me it's give you another one. Let me isn't it? You... It's subjective because how you... It is. It's... It is subjective. It is. But let me go back to my little point for a second, Tony, because you make a good point. Because if there were Man City people in the chat, they'd be blowing up right now, right? <laughs> yeah. But for me, but for me, right, world class, for me, you win every trophy in your league, you know, in your in your country. Hold on a minute, hold on. You win the Champions League and you win the World Cup. That makes you well. You're not asking for much, are you, Des? You <laughs> are. He really isn't, <laughs> is he, Alex? In fairness, guys, in fairness, world class means you're the best. Wow. You know what I'm saying? I tell you what, there's a lot of world class players who suddenly lost their class. <laughs> 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 maybe so, maybe so, maybe so, maybe so. Right, let's think of an Arsenal world class player or who could have been a world class player, right? Liam Brady. Brady, yeah, Liam Brady. That's exactly what I was going to say. Who? World class or not? Oh, yeah, I would have said so. Uh, oh. Terry, Terry Henry. Terry Henry. Terry Henry has got all the credentials you just talked about. Liam Brady doesn't. Oh, no, but you had to see Liam Brady play, mate. Oh, that's but now thing. you're going against him. That's going to see you, but it's going back to your point. That it's, it's, you know, what did you say it was, um, Alex? Subjective. It's subjective. Yeah. yeah. But 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 you said that you've got to have won major honours at the World no. Cup. Liam Brady didn't yeah. win the World Cup. Yes, yeah. I'm not going to retract from what I said because that would make me a hypocrite, right? <laughs> but what I'm saying is... Funny. Um, when you talk about subjective, I'm talking about when I say world class, I mean when I said win this league, win this cup, win that, win this, win that. It's you've gone out there and earned it, and that makes you world class. There are other ways you can become world class, I will accept that, right? But I'm going, and I was coming to that, you see, Tony, but I'm going on. If you look at Zinazine Zidane as an example, which was better example than Harry flipping cat. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> right. If you look at someone like Zinazine Zidane, um, Maradona, I mean, you chuck loads of players in the pot, couldn't you? Can but I throw one in this? Of course you can, yeah. Okay, is this player world, cup, world class? And he's oh, won no. everything. Olivier Giroud. <sighs> to me, yes, he is. To me, he is. <laughs> to me, <laughs> to me, nah, to me, he is, mate, because he's done it. He's gone out there and he's done it. He's done it, and he's still playing today, isn't he? Still yeah, playing. yeah, exactly, exactly. No, I mean, yes, I, I love Giroud. I so, love Giroud, but you don't think he's world class? Why not, Tony? 
Uh, and the thing is, Tony, before you because you, by the by, by the standards because... of what I consider world class, he wasn't actually world class. But I do think he's absolutely right under the cusp of. I'm, you know what? I'm actually gonna I'm gonna chuck what I just said. He is world class. I love him, and the reason I love him is <laughs> I do think he's world class. I think he, for a period of time, he was France's best um, player up front. He definitely, he's, he's got the record now for most goals for France, overtaking Zidane and, and so on. Um, at, at Arsenal, he was derided by very many fans. Yeah, yeah. I liked him. Yeah. I actually liked I him. I liked him yeah. Yeah. because yeah, to yeah, me, without him, Theo Walcott would have got half the goals he got. Exactly. And he could hold up a ball as well. He had many Superb. talents. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. But Tony, look, going back to you know the, the first topic about um, stats, surely when you see a player from your eyes, you can see this player. Your mm. eyes will tell you that this player is is world class. Yeah. I don't know Zidane Zidane's uh, stats over yeah. the course of his uh, career, but you yeah. look at him, you see how he plays, you say mm. this guy is world class. World class, yeah. Is Ronaldo yeah. world class? Oh, absolutely. Right. Okay. So. Uh, then let me ask, uh, and this is going to upset a few people, and I'm sorry, and it's been oh, controversial. No. It's Ozil world class. He won, he won to the me, world he is. To me, 20 goals, 20 assists, World um, Cup winner, European you Cup he, winner. He has I'll to be world well, class. I would be. agree. I would agree. So it's, to subje be. it's exactly what Alex said, but we're having a bit of banter with it. It's totally subjective. Yeah. But the Harry Kane was a big mistake. <laughs> Tony, quick question. <laughs> Squadron Mustafi, is he world class? Won a World Cup with Germany. Mm. There and you so, go. World class? Did we buy him as a world class player then? Did we buy him as a world class player? <laughs> <laughs> we could talk about this all night, guys. We really could. The list would go on and on and on, wouldn't it? So, yeah. Tony, was that a yes or a no? Bukai Saka is world class. To me, not yet. Yeah. Not yeah. yet. Yeah. He could, he will be, or he could be. He's got the potential. He could be. Could be. But he's not, he's not there yet. Not there I yet. think also with Bukai Saka, he plays in a, he plays in a system where he's not asked to do certain things, and that has to be considered. When we're not a team where you're asking a player to go and beat the last man and cross it in. Because we don't do that. There's nobody there to head of the ball in. Yeah. yeah? Yeah. So rather, it's a more intricate system of coming in, um, give, go, run around, find yourself. You know, there's lots of different moving parts to the way that he plays that makes him dynamic for our team. Mm. He does have lulls. Obviously, for weeks on end, you know, we've seen situations where he's not effective in play, but he's a system player who has the smarts to turn up in the right place at the right time and score goals and mm -hmm. create opportunities. And on that basis and that basis alone, he's up there with the best in the world right now. Because his XG, his XA, XGA... <laughs> which is goal stroke assists mm -hmm. is in the top five of all players in all divisions globally. See, for me, Tony, in order again, in order for you to be seen as or considered world class, when your team really needs you and you can put the performance yeah, in to get the yeah. team over the line. And I didn't see that against FC Porto. I didn't see Bukai. Okay, Saka. I get I get that. that but yeah. he's also scored important goals in his, in important games. <laughs> he scores against Man City. He scores against Liverpool. He scores against Tottenham. So I know what you're saying, mm. but it's not like he's... There are some players who feed off of the poor and never score against the rich. Yeah, He's not yeah. that guy. He'll score you in important games. And yes, he didn't score yesterday, but he has scored in several other games that you could go, that was an important game, and he contributed. Mm. There's... Just one quick one. If you're a really good if you're a really good player in your position, i.e., top five in your country or the world, and you haven't won a World Cup, you haven't won this, you haven't won that, 
for example, let's use Saliba as an example. Okay, the man is a Rolls Royce. Makes mistakes, but all players make mistakes. Mm. But he's one of the best defenders in the Premier League. Yeah, I know he's not world class yet, but yeah, that's the building block to becoming world class, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. got to start somewhere, hasn't it? It's got to start yeah. somewhere. You know, and wow. obviously Saka is Saka is brilliant in his position, but as we've all said, he's just not there yet. Yeah. yeah, I think one of the things that we have to also consider about Saka is he gets compared to other wingers who play in different teams in different ways. Now, I'll give you some examples. I remember last year, one of my co-presenters on the 101 uh, channel, he was glowing, was constantly talking about how good Alan St. Maximum was at... at um, at Newcastle. Newcastle. Oh, yeah. Alan yeah, yeah, yeah. Maximum would run you ragged. Yeah. He's one of the most dynamic dribblers of football in the game. But guess what he can't do? Score goals, create mm. assists. Yeah. His stats are shoot. But yeah. he's one of the most phenomenal dribblers of a ball. Let me give you another one. That everybody was talking about how good this guy, how fast he was. Armand Traore. Oh, yeah. A couple yeah, of yeah. seasons ago, yeah. Armand Traore was as fast as you could possibly get on a football field. Knock the ball, run past the player, and then cross it. Never scored goals, but was creative. Hmm. Yeah? Hmm. So creative that Barcelona bought, um, went and loaned him. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah? That's yeah. right, yeah. Yeah? yeah. yeah? Barcelona yeah. don't loan players if they're not good. And what's happened to him? He's come back, and where is he? Now, two good players who were at any given time considered to be excellent wingers because they could run past their player. But neither are even close to Bukayo Saka in terms of XGA, or as we, will, as we more often like to call it, contribution to, to, the, to the winning of the game. So, so Todd, is a, a, a compare, if I were to compare him to Mo Salah, would that still be unfair? No, because yeah. no. It, is, it is the same kind of thing, but Mo Salah is literally the most elite player in that position in the world. There's nobody else better than him. Mm -hmm. Dad, sorry, you want to say something, Des? No, no, it's got, uh, no? I was going to throw one in. I was going to throw one in, like Tony's, give you a couple of jobs. I was going to give you one. Alex Awobi, look at him now. And he was going to be a great player, or was made to, or everybody was saying, oh, Alex Awobi's the future. When a, when a player gets called there the future, there's not many that can prove people wrong, it seems. Do you know what mm. I mean? Saka mm. might be one of them, you know? But Alex Awobi, look at him now. And he, he, I liked it when he played at Arsenal. I thought he, <coughs> he was a little player, you know, do you know what I mean? It's, and, and what about, Alex Oxley Chamberlain. Yeah. 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 But he's not yeah. world class at this moment in time. I want him to be. Yeah, we all do. We all do. Yeah, yeah. We all do. Yeah. You know, but it's, it's very, very subjective. Uh, guys, the last segment. Um, Newcastle. Last time I played Newcastle, there was some controversy. There was big controversy, Tony. Mm. Where's this one going to head? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm always confident in the ability of our team. Um I'm just thinking, you know, it's a home game. We've had a difficult yeah. midweek, but we've got to come back home. We've got to dust off the dust. I hope that we see some fresh legs on the pitch in certain positions just to freshen up things. Uh, I'd like to see Trossard and Havertz dropped in favour of, you know, maybe this is the game to give um, Jesus back his opportunity. You know, if he's fit enough and hungry enough, you know, this might be the kind of game where he can come in fresh legs and be a difference maker. Um, if not, you know, um, there's a there's a fellow who's been sitting around um, not getting his chance in Eddie Inketia. Does he get a chance tomorrow? Does Emil Smith Rowe deserve a chance tomorrow? So, you know, I, as I said, I just feel like 
you know, we've seen Trossard and Havertz tearing it up with the other players, scoring 21 goals in the previous five, uh, four games, five games. Um, it's maybe time for us a, a, a review and to go, you know, right, okay, some of those legs might be a bit tired. Let's bring mm, fresh lovely. legs on and let's show Newcastle, you know, that we are capable because we've got depth of squad to be able to rotate and still get a result at home tomorrow. It's going to be a tough one. Uh, Des? I've got, I've got a bit of a scoop for you, lads, because I've been talking to my Geordie friends last night. Yeah. All right, OK. Well, a bit of a scoop for you. The match should have been played on Sunday. I don't know why it's at 8 o'clock on a Saturday night, but it should have yeah. been played on Sunday. Number two, Joe Linton is injured, so we need to hit Burn. Burn... Burn only plays well when he's got Joe Lint. This is according to my Geordie friends, right? Joe Lint um, Burn only plays well when Joe Linton's in front of him. Okay. Mm. Um, strikers out. Will is it Wilson? It is Wilson, isn't it? Yeah, Callum Wilson. Yeah, he's out. Yeah. Uh, they might have coming back Isaac and Willock. He might be coming. They might be coming back. But as I say, Joe Linton's out, so the midfield's a bit all over the place. This could be the one time where Arsenal could get their revenge. But we have to storm Burn because he's the weak link in the chain, according uh, to the Georgians. There's quick question. Would you rotate or would you go with the 11 that played against FC Porto? I wouldn't go with the... Uh, I, I'd go with the team that played Burnley. I wouldn't, I wouldn't oh, go right, with the... Okay. I'd go it was the same team. team. It was the same team. The same team. Yeah, they didn't, didn't change anything. No, no, didn't yeah. they? Oh, no, 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 they didn't make any changes. No, Jorginho came on. I thought George. Sorry, I had a moment there. Sorry, I'm old. All right. Um, yeah, it's the same team. <laughs> yes, so yes, I would. I would. I would. I would go with the same team. But yeah, um, I agree. I would. Because if it ain't broke, I mean, apart, I mean, you got to remember the Porto goal was out of the blue. If it isn't broke, don't try and fix it. Mm, yeah. Right. Jesus isn't ready to come back yet. Uh, Enketia, I think he's out of form, but he's also out of confidence, to be honest. So, and Trossard seems to be playing that number nine position pretty well. Yeah. So, but did he? Did we see? Did we see a little bit of burnout with Trossard in midweek? Because if so, maybe no, this no. is where you give him a rest. It and wasn't bring burnout. Him off the bench. It, was, it wasn't burnout. It was frustration. Okay. That's what that was. I don't think that was burnout at all. I think that was frustration because he couldn't get. Because I said it on, um, I was on the show with Glenwin on Tuesday, which was a great show, by the way. It was really good. If you get a chance to watch it, please do. Um, it's it's a case of uh, Trossard has this ability to nine times out of ten to be in the right place at the right time. Mm. Yeah. Odegaard against Burnley did what he should be doing all season. He had a go from outside the 18-yard box. Yeah. Um, we just, I don't know, we play differently in the Premier League. We, we really do. And since Christmas, since whatever they did in Dubai, what we need to do is we need to go until the international break, right? And then go back over to Dubai again. <laughs> do, do whatever they did again and then come back and win the seat and win the league. No, well, but no, I would go with the team that played Porto. Sorry, <laughs> do you know what? I thought Jorginho came on. I'm having a moment. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go into the live chat and read off this last comment before we wrap up this um, easy talk. Uh, Colin says, Eddie is washed. Sorry, get some money. Retire the number 14 as it should have been. Tony, retire number 14? Ooh. Oh, um, <laughs> if ever there was a retirement of a number, then, I mean... We just can't get into that really because then you'd want to yeah. retire the 10, you'd want to retire the seven. You know, you end up yeah, with yeah. no numbers in about 20 years' time. <laughs> and Terry Henry has never moaned about Eddie and Ketter having the 14, has he? Nah. Yeah, you know what I mean, I'm not, so, I'm not about it's, it's it's an Americanism, they do it in basketball. I, I'm not for it. We don't, we don't retire numbers, no other team does it. I'm, I'm not about that life, so uh, no, thank you. Let's keep the 14 no. going. Um, yeah, it has it has history, you know. It yeah. Has, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, are you world class if you win Champions League or Premier League? There's you want both, don't you? I want both, yeah. Both, both. yeah. Oh, sorry, Geezer, it's the truth. I do, I want both. 
Uh, I know one guy that just uh, uh, do, does not need getting any more minutes in the arsehole kit is Cedric Suarez. Tony, are you, are you surprised that we've, we've not sold him? I am very surprised because I think he's a very good player. I think he's Thank more you. than capable of playing at Thank a decent you. level in any yeah. team. And I really I really don't know what he's done to be down the way player. he has been. I just feel like, I feel sorry for the kid, if I'm being totally honest. It's like, you know, Kieran Tierney the same, you know. What does he? What has he ever done wrong? No, he hasn't. He hasn't. And Cedric's, a good, team. Right. Actually, it is. Sorry. Cedric's Sorry. a good team player. Yeah. Yep, yep. Uh, a couple more. Uh, whoops. Uh, uh, Colin Young, a stat says, Eddie is world class. Actual proof. Yeah, because if you look at his goals per minute played, he's at the highest end of the of the spectrum, you know. And one of the things that you go is, well, if you don't play him, you're not going to see that. And yeah, he could, he, you know, he's he scored a hat trick this season. Who else has scored a hat trick for Arsenal this season? That's that again, yeah, yeah. yeah. God, yeah. But you know what? That Oh, go on, Dad. Go on. No, it's just it's so open, isn't it? This world, this world class yeah. conversation. Uh, I'm going to say something you agree with and disagree with, and it's vice versa all the way around, all three ways, you know. But yeah. but it, it keeps it interesting. Absolutely, absolutely. Do you know what? Uh, we've come to an end on uh, this this latest uh, segment on the Easy Talk, and I, I tell you what, uh, it's been. It's been a really good show and a discussion about world class Harry Kane, Tony. Harry Kane. Harry Kane, Tony. I'm t Tony maybe Kane. I'll be interested to see the the feedback when it comes through about is Harry Kane um, world class. I mean, I will give it. We say we say that Olivia Giroud is world class because he's won a World Cup, he's won a, uh, a league title. You know, he's. Um, He's France's top scorer. Well, Harry Kane has got some amazing stats that exceed those of Olivier, Olivier Giroud, but he hasn't got the plaudits because obviously he's playing for a crap team or was playing for a crap team and they, and they win nothing historically. No, and when yeah. the players are like that, that play for mm. poor teams, I mean, let me give you another one just mm. quickly. Matt Letizia. I was just about to say him. I was just about to say him. Oh, do you know it is? Uh, great player, but not world class. Sorry. Really? Yeah, 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 yeah. And and this is my point. Matt Letizia. Matt Letizia. Do you remember <laughs> when England used to have a beast club? Yeah. Matt Letizia. When England were just preparing for a World Cup, played for a B team, scored a hat trick in a in an international friendly, and know, never I saw know. the light of England again. And I was know. Like, what do you need to do? You're a you, midfielder and you scored a hat trick for England, yet you can't get in an England team. Yeah, yeah, I know. Possibly I know, that, the most dynamic player I've ever seen in midfield. No, nah, oh god, no! Shush now, have a go. <laughs> <laughs> the, the thing that doesn't make him not the thing, that, honestly, the thing that doesn't make him world class, right? Played for Southampton. If he'd have moved about, unfashionable. Team. If he'd have yeah. moved about, he would have been. I agree with you, world class. Yeah. But he he made his decision, and he can't disrespect it. Yeah. And I'm going to say something quickly about Kane. All the joking about Kane, right? He's got some clout. I'll give him that, right? He's finally got he's finally got that rock off his back from moving from Tottenham. I'll give him that as well, right? And I won't take this away from him because I believe in the Bundesliga, he's breaking Lewandowski's record, isn't he? Yeah, he broke it already. Yeah. Yeah. So again, he's he's like Saka. He's got the he, depending on where he goes. But that's the, XG's, the XG's good, bro. Yeah, yeah. The <laughs> We've gone full circle. <laughs> I, I tell you what, I, I, I would. I've got to be honest. I would have him at Arsenal today. I'd have him at Arsenal. I've got to be honest with you. I think I we've all we'd, had that before. Yeah. I, think I, got, yeah. I wish we'd have gone in for him when he was available. Yeah. 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 Anyway, um, that, that that is it. Uh, Pugilistic boy, wow! You brought the noise and then some, man. Nice one. <laughs> nice one. <laughs> Always a pleasure, my friend. Always a pleasure. I nice love one. these chats. Nice one, nice one. And um, the enforcement enforcer, 
You yeah. brought it. Nice one. Brilliant. I love you guys. Thank you very much, Alex. It's always a pleasure. Yeah, it's always there's... great being here with Tony because uh, we just bounce and it's good. Yeah, it's lovely. Yeah. I love yeah. it. Brilliant. So next time uh, you will see me will be tomorrow for the um, instant post game reaction, Arsenal versus Newcastle, and they didn't even give a prediction. They didn't give a prediction. I'll give you one if you want one. Go on in. 2-1. Two, 2-1. One. Two, one. Tony. 2-0 two oh. to Arsenal. I'll go 3-1. 3-1 three, three, one. Three, one Arsenal. 3-1 Arsenal. Arsenal. Last one. That's it. Uh, easy talk. Be back tomorrow on the instant post game reaction. So from uh, the fellas and myself, uh, this has been Canon for the, the channel for Arsenal fans all over this world.